I'll tell you, Greg, thank you, first of all, uh, for the invite and uh, all of you for coming out uh, today to spend some time with us. And being here at the Jackson Center, I mean, it's just an amazing amount of history. And I so appreciate what you guys have done uh, to keep that history alive and accessible uh, to so many. Uh, for such a, a great man uh, who, with uh, Justice Jackson, everything he did and everything he st stands for, I just want you to know I really appreciate it. And our office will be a resource as we talked um, to see what we can do to continue on that mission. Hopefully our goal is to find out a little bit more about who Tom Reed really is. My dad was career military, uh, Greg. He was 20 years in the Army. Uh, then he retired uh, out of the Army and ran the Rock Island Arsenal, uh, which is out in Illinois. And I'm the youngest of 12, so I have 11 older bro brothers and sisters. And uh, when Dad retired and he uh, uh, kind of went into that civil service branch of the federal government running the arsenal, uh, we laid some roots down in Illinois. Um, now, Dad passed when I was two, uh, so he passed um, in the early 70s, and both my mom and dad are from Corning, and my grandparents on both sides are from Corning. So my, uh, I live in a house my grandpa built in 1922, uh, same house that we moved back to to Corning after my father passed. My mom uh, brought the six of us back home and uh, raised us all by herself, and uh, she was just a, a fabulous woman, just a great person. Uh, she truly is the person I've always looked up to in my life. And when she passed in 98, uh, that was the moment where I said to my wife, you know, it's time to go home. And so that's how we went from Illinois down to back to Corning, and that's where we live now, and, and happily so. You come back to Corning at that time period, and did, how did politics beckon? Politics was something that, um, obviously, having the political science degree and going to law school, it's always something that was uh, always out there. Um, with Dad's career military uh, service, and it was ingrained in me uh, by my, uh, my mother and older sisters and brothers that, you know, you, you give back. You give back to your community whenever you can. And I always thought political service would be my way because I didn't choose to go down the military service. I always thought political service would be my way uh, at the end of my career or second career of giving back to the community and standing up for, for our area. Um, but it happened much faster. The circumstances were such that it didn't work out that way. Uh, but I always envisioned um, that in my future. Did I ever envision going to Washington, D.C.? Uh, no, uh, that was not the, it wasn't like it was laid out in some, some type of um, you know, step by step goal type of uh, action item. It was just where there was an opportunity, we were going to stand up, and I thought it would be much later down the road. Uh, at Alfred, you were an NCAA Division Three All American swimmer. What would you would you swim? <laughs> I was a uh, middle distance freestyle, and I, I kind of chuckle at that because obviously, uh, you know, looking at me today, now mo most people don't come up and say, "Oh, you must have been a swimmer." <laughs> uh, I, I'm more of a floater today than I am a, <laughs> than I am a swimmer. But uh, yeah, we, uh, swimming was a great uh, part of my life, and uh, still is because of so many friendships I've created from um, swimming for 14 years. When you first ran uh, in Corning, you defeated an incumbent. We did, um, and a lot of that swimming um, history, uh, the lessons I learned in the pool, I, I think is something I've taken with me in my day-to-day -day personal life and business life and professional life. Um, you, When you're swimming, it's an individual sport, but it's still a team sport, um, and you also have goals. Uh, it's a big uh, sport that is um, a lot of goal-orientated uh, type of programming. Um, you know, your best times you keep track of, you um, always are working towards getting better and uh, a lot of individual responsibility. You know, swimming two or three hours uh, at a time, looking at the black line back and forth can get mm -hmm. a little um, mind-numbing, but it gives you a lot of time to think. Uh, law was always something, uh, I can remember back in fourth grade, I was fortunate, I always knew kind of what I wanted to do uh, in my life and I I talked to my uh, plenty of nieces and nephews, and you met one today, Olivia, who's interning in our office, and she knows I kind of hound them on, on this. And it is you got to be thinking ahead. You got to have a kind of a plan as to where you're going to go. And I remember in fourth grade, I had a teacher, Miss Fredicangelo, uh, who at the end of one day she goes, you know, you like to talk a lot, and and you always question everything. Why don't you be a lawyer? And uh, that's. That's where it started. I said, well, I think that might be of interest to me. Yeah. And from fourth grade on, I knew I always wanted to be a lawyer. It was just something I, I found interesting. And I had interned at a law firm down in Cincinnati. 
there were some opportunities that were given to me to potentially stay in the Cincinnati Columbus area. My wife was working um, at a local um, facility called LabCorp. She was a med tech microbiologist um, and she was waitressing at the time and that was always kind of a secondary job. Long story short, you know, we started to talk and we, we knew we were going to get married the following year and she knew it was important for me to be near my family. Uh, my mother was getting older um, each and every day. Her parents were getting older each and every day and we took out a map and we said, you know what, she's from South Buffalo, I'm from Corning. We kind of circled on Rochester, it's an hour and a half each way mm -hmm. and we said, why don't we uh, plant some roots there. And so that's, that's how we ended up in Rochester. It was really a logistical decision that was made in order to be able to see both sets of parents. Municipal corporate counseling, it says here. Uh, did that give you a, kind of an opening a little bit of how municipal law or municipal work works? Yeah, it, it, that started at Gallo and Yacovangelo. Um, one of the partners uh, in the litigation group, in the upstairs group, um, did a lot of uh, general corporate counseling for municipalities. Um, and he would represent them on a day-to-day -day basis. And he took ill. And the partners said, hey, why don't we send Tom over? He's kind of helping everybody out because, you know, being a young associate, you kind of did all the day-to-day -day stuff. And so they started sending me to the town of Rondequoit, town of Greece up there, and developed some good relationships there with the town supervisors and the town boards and got exposed to municipal law. And it was an area that, as a municipal lawyer, I'll tell you, you touch everything. Right. Um, Every day is a new issue that comes in. And I'll say that uh, that experience uh, opened up a path when we went back to Corning uh, that I saw that was going to be part of my business plan uh, for my own law practice when we eventually moved back to Corning. And whenever I commit to something, uh, I go 100% into it. And we worked really hard. We put 75,000 miles on the car, uh, our team traveling around. We just put the miles on the car, started to run. Everybody, everybody said that was an impossible task. There was no way uh, I was going to uh, win that race. And we had an overwhelming support team that just stood strong, stood with us, and we just kept working hard. And uh, we, were, we were successful the first go around. So I'm on Ways and Means. Uh, we were appointed there about a year and a half ago. And um, that was a whole nother journey. Yeah, I bet. Explain it. Well, I started on transportation and judiciary. Um, kind of just put ourselves in a position to work hard, play, you know, work hard and, and try to uh, do, the, do what was necessary of being a member down there. 2011, when you were appointed to the uh, Ways and Means Committee, you attribute that selection to, quote, walking the speaker's dog four days a week. Is that right? <laughs> I, I said that tongue in cheek and uh, <laughs> I can assure you that, that was, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, we were joking about it because uh, so many people couldn't believe that that had happened to us. And, um, yeah, so we made the an <laughs> off-comment joke. <laughs> Another thing, uh, you proposed a resolution to install a clock with the estimated United States national debt updated in real time in the chamber of the House of Representatives. How'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, House historians and the architects did not approve of that request. <laughs> But we did it more for the purpose of, of trying to put into focus the size of this national debt, why it is a crisis, how it's growing out of control. And every time we pass a bill in the House, we should be aware of that. And so that was the intention of the resolution. And it got some national attention. Some people picked up with it. I, I have a reputation in Washington of being able to talk to anybody, you know, trying to... I, I'm a country lawyer from Western New York. Um, I don't have all the answers but I'm going to ask the questions and I'm going to do the work to try to get the answers. You're the second lawyer now who's described himself as a country lawyer from Western New York. The first one's now going to have his name on the federal courthouse <laughs> up in Buffalo, so <laughs> welcome. Oh, I like that. <laughs> well, that's great company. If I can, geez, those are big, big, big shoes to fill. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, you know, you asked me some personal questions that I haven't thought about in a long time, um, and I appreciate that, and I just... Uh, Going down memory lane because sometimes can be very refreshing, and today's experience was. It well, gave me a chance you. to think of some people I haven't thought of in well, quite some time. Well, thank you for coming to the district, spending your time here to the Jackson Center, and welcome to Tom Reed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.